Simpson and I uh, were reminiscing, like, we used to go to those meets, and oh. it was, like, fucking chaos, like, this weird, weird dudes. And, like, you'd have a cop and a fireman next to a guy who just got out of jail, mm-hmm. right? And then you had, like, a hell's angel. I'm, I'm not going to tell it. Like, I remember the guy with the, he always pushing his hernias oh. and taping mm-hmm. them up. Yep. yep. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm not, he yeah. passed away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. a long time uh, ago. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah it was like I think at one of the APF Nationals, someone had just gotten out. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't yeah, want to say his just, name. He had just gotten. He's like, yeah, he just got out. Yeah, and I just remember like it was a, it was a, such a weird blend of characters. But it was, it was awesome. Yeah, it was, and like every, like no one was like weird about it. But it was very competitive. Don't get me wrong. It was but, an aura of like you never knew. You didn't. You weren't afraid, but you didn't know. It well, was, if was, you were a new guy, yeah, you were intimidated. You know what it was? It was like going to a 1980s hardcore show. When like, listen, I don't know. There might be a fucking you, pit bull here. Or, <laughs> you never know what was going to happen. Yeah. You had no idea. And now that's the, that's the, I'm not, I hate sounding like the old guy, but that's what, when I go to meets now, meets are boring to begin with, but at least you had the characters. Yeah. You don't have the characters. But anymore. even the gyms too. Like right. ki- kids don't, people don't travel. Like I, that's how I met you. <laughs> Dave that's how called I met me you. up. The fuck Wendler. Yeah. <laughs> You sent me a volleyball player. Yeah. <laughs> Greatest story but ever. Like, In what, case nobody heard it, go ahead and tell yeah. it. What, what, but when I walked into <laughs> the fuck, I'm like, what, what, who, I'm like, cause I didn't know you were going or something. Yeah. And he's like, I don't know. Come some on, guy came up and said, give the story, you. give the I'm story. Like, well, Come what on. Do you, what, what do you look like? He's like, ah, you look like a volleyball player. And I was like, ah, oh, Rhodes. <laughs> Long Meanwhile, story. I'm six four, like two hundred and fifty five pounds. Yeah, Not a volleyball player. Small, but Meanwhile, okay, Wendler sent, he was the Rhodes. Yeah. Wendler sent yeah. Rhodes to West Side to see Dave. <laughs> Dave. Now, I don't remember how you like, No, what, I called, you, you Louis. called Louis. I was at yeah. Pitt. Oh, okay. And I had called Louie. I said, Hey, you know, can I come out and train? He's like, Oh, we're doing a meet this weekend and blah blah blah. And the guys don't usually like people there. I'm like, I totally get it. And I'm like, Are you guys gonna be in West Virginia? It was at Charleston. Yeah. Yeah. It was when Chuck squatted two, uh, 10, 10 25. 25 or something like that. That was my elite. That was my yeah. first elite. Nice. And uh, he's like, oh, you're going to be there? Ah, fuck it. Come on out. Who cares? And so I drove out to Westside that Friday morning. I left at Pittsburgh at, I don't know, like 4 in the morning. And <laughs> I pulled up to the, the, the gym in, at Demarest. The windows were painted. And the music was already going. It was like 7.45. Or st- I was like, oh, I opened the door. And it was Chuck Vogelpool standing there. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. And all the all the names in there, I can't remember everybody, but it was the morning crew on Friday. Louis like, all right, you're a new, you're a new guy, you're up first. I'm like, <laughs> all, these guys are getting ready for a meet to do like something good. I, I'll just squat when they're done. <laughs> but I there was a part of it was fear, but part of it was I want to watch these guys right and learn. A lot of people want to talk about stuff. Mm-hmm. We learned when I came to you. I shut my mouth and I, I watched and I listened and it's the same thing I did at Westside and when I would come out to Kentucky when you were in the, 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 the garage. storage garage there, I would we would talk, but I would just sit and listen and, and listen to people that were better than and me. Spot and load. Older than me. Yeah. And, Show up, spot and load, and offer there's something. So much to learn and when you don't have that, you like that's where I did all my learning. Yeah. Now I can talk about it. Now I have the I can back up the ego. Just we well, we can all back up yeah. that ego because we've been there, and you you the learning and the watching is like. So I watched Chuck and uh, Tilt was there, and I can't remember all the guys now, but I watched all these guys go through their their groups, and I finally understood like, oh, this is what the pace of dynamic squat day looks like. This is what the pace of this looks like, and 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 this is the intensity, and you it, could tell the focus on squat versus the focus when you got to glued hams is the mail it in type you you worked your ass off but you learned all that stuff by shutting the fuck and if, up and if watching you were in the i rotation, learned so much if you're in the rotation you'd have never gotten and i yeah and i and i remember <laughs> i knew who dave was and uh <laughs> i was standing there being just in the way taking up <laughs> oxygen for people How that could were you working that hard size? <laughs> and, and uh he goes we're gonna belt squat and it's because he wanted me to load the belt squat <laughs> yeah. for him. He wanted me to help him load. I didn't know <laughs> that. Man, but you were all proud. You're yeah, like, I, I'm I was. Order, squat with but Dave I, Tate. But, but I figured it out order. pretty quickly because I was like on the it, back side. Belt squat. Mm-hmm. I was on the back side of the belt squat where it was harder mm-hmm. to get in and load. And I, I figured it out pretty quickly. But I'm like, holy shit, it's fucking Dave Tate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm belt squatting with him. And he's like, put a plate on. I'm like, I can't lift that much weight <laughs> i didn't say anything i'm like okay he would do eight or ten reps i'd get like, like free shaking through and which I, one i was still 
But uh, <laughs> but yeah, Dave was super cool to me. Like, why would you talk to some random dude that walked in? But most he wasn't people- trying to be my buddy, but he was like, he one, I served a purpose. You kept <laughs> in, and you kept your mouth shut. I kept my mouth shut, and I somehow helped a little bit. Yeah. And we, we shot the shit You're a little bit. You're fun to look at. Yeah. But we shot the shit a little bit, but it was like, and then Jim called, you went to West Side? I'm like, yeah. And then I heard the whole volleyball player. I'm like, oh. It's- oh wait, can we tell that whole part again? What happened, Dave? What's that? When, uh, I, I, don't, when, I, don't, when, Dave, I don't think Dave, I don't know if you called me specifically for that. I think I called that. him. I said one of your friends was up here. Yeah. yeah. He said he knew you, and you know how that goes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, which I can't, guy? I, I can't tell you how many kids I've ran into, like who I work with, said, so and so said he was spotting you on your thousand pound squat. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah. eh, not the, no, no. I didn't need one. Did he, look, <laughs> did he look like a volleyball player? Yeah, but it was weird because I'm like, th- I've probably a half a dozen people like, yeah, this guy says he was there, used to train with you. I'm like, I don't know. Like, most of the guys, like, what are they, like, Rogeria's hanging out mm-hmm. in yeah. London or anything <laughs> like that. And, uh, but anyway, he called and, he, and he, you know, it was, this guy knows you. And then he could, Dave, no, you know, didn't remember his name. It took me a while. Said he was from, uh, I don't know, <laughs> someone with a P or an R. Yeah, no, whatever. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Maybe an ball. S or a T. Yeah. Yeah. The no no, no vowels. Yeah. No <laughs> Wait a minute. It might have been an O. <laughs> yeah. 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 But uh, that's what, so just mm. killing on each other. I haven't been in a gym in forever. Like, I, are people nice to each other in gyms now? Like, well, to your can point. Can you still be mean to each other? Well, what I was going to say, and this is kind of scream, but point, you can't hear anything with the mask on. <laughs> is I've been training for close to 40 years, I believe now, if I started in 82. And I can, with just thinking back, I started at Finley Barbell Club. Then after there, I went to Toledo to school when I was at Hard Bodies and then East River Barbell and uh, a Gold's Gym. And that actually would have only been one gym if the group I wasn't training with didn't move to different gyms. Yeah. Right. And then from there to West Side, right? And then my own place. So in the 40 years, I've actually only trained in six different gyms. And if you combine those three, it's even less than that. It's like four. Right. So. The difference, though, from then and now, if I wanted to powerlift, I had nowhere else to go. Right, yeah. Right? So if when I was I in Toledo, I had to move with my crew, so right? Every, everyone in Toledo worked at, if you're a powerlifter. Yeah, so you all same. went to that same place, right? So I, I had never to, thought about it like that. I yeah. had to learn how to get along with people I didn't like because they were part of that crew. <laughs> Tell where, me about it. And Westside was probably the epitome of that because there was <laughs> even more. But if, if you got mad, there was – to me, there was really nowhere else to go. There might have been somebody's basement or something like that. So you, you learned how to train with the drug dealer, the cop, the teacher, the brain surgeon, and all those other people. So you learned how to coexist coexist and get along with other people. Yay, Where now, coexist. just in Columbus, I bet there's 20 different places right. that you could go powerlift right now. So you have one little issue with one person. You're like, oh, fuck this place. I'm going somewhere else. Yep. Right. So from the, the social dynamic of that, I'm sure we could debate. We, I'm sure we'd all agree, but everybody else would debate with us, you know, on how that kind of hurts that. Yeah, but I think that ends yeah. up rolling over. And I haven't competed for years. I haven't even gone to a meet for years. But I'm sure that rolls over into the people in each federation now are, are more alike mm-hmm. than they yeah, are okay. different. But Where back then there were fewer federations. Two, right? three. And you had this conglomerate of all these different people in there. So you went to the meet, you saw all these different types of people. And like, I can't speak about the meets today, but if it's following the same pattern as the gyms do, this meet, this meet director is going to have all the same type of people. Mm -hmm. And that won't be that. Part. diversity or whatever yeah, whatever you yeah. want to call yeah. it right yep. i just yep. called it getting along with people because you need spotters and loaders but yeah. you learn how to respect the differences you also learn how to ah maybe i don't want to go out to the bar with this guy yeah. you know you kind of learn right. where to stay away from <laughs> you know if, if you are out with them it's like you try to ditch the people really quick mm-hmm. um yep. like my sister and i were talking about that in college you had your friends mm-hmm. and then you had the people that you only wanted to see at the bar mm-hmm or whatever, and it's kind of the same thing. Like, you had your training partners that were training partners. They're friends, but you never hung out yeah. outside, and that's fine. It's just the way it was. Yeah. And you, like, we all <laughs> had a, a story about that. We all had yeah. a similar goal in, in all, like you said, all these different backgrounds, but we all shared the weightlifting, the powerlifting, the competition. The the, yeah. Yeah. And we all knew what we needed to do to accomplish that lifts, that day's goal yeah. in the gym. And then we'd go our separate ways for six or seven days, and we'd come back together. And then we'd all, half for us, half of us would compete on the same day. The other half would help. Mm-hmm. Right. And then the other half would compete the next meet and so on. And it just, 
it was never discussed. It just, just happened. It's yeah. how it was, and everyone filled there. We didn't all like each other. Yeah. Most people probably didn't like me. Yeah. Um, but they all helped me, and they all did a lot. <laughs> of, you know, oh, a, yeah, lot I mean, of a lot of people really, Boston really stuff like that. I will yeah, say, I will helped. Say, I miss and, the big meet. I miss going to the meets. And even all meets were big meets because there weren't that many. Yeah. Now, like, in a, you know, COVID aside, uh, you could, uh, you look in anywhere, there's 20 different meets and like, you know, in, in your own state almost every weekend. And It's and, great for the sport, but it's, what they're missing what we had, right, especially which, what you which had. Is what made it, yeah. Which is what and made you. it fun. Like the whole weekend was fun. Like yeah. not just the lifting. The lifting I love, but just seeing the other people you haven't seen for like it used to be like you know you'd have to call your friend and say hey how'd that lift go at the meet oh it was sucked it was high yeah. you know now you're watching video but you know the whole thing was more about you know you were you were more connect, you were more connected to everybody which was fun because it was definitely a group of characters and you learned you learned mm -hmm. like yeah that's how i figured like i became a pretty good raw bencher and a pretty good equip bencher because I found one of the best equipped benches to bench with, and yep. I found one of the best raw benches to bench yep. with. And, and you had the best handoff I, guy. And I had the best handoff guy ever. ever. But I commuted 10 hours a week to train. Right. Hand job guy. What? Right. I com commuted right. What, to, to Crawford's eight yeah. hours round trip on uh, Jesus. He was New York. He was a bench wizard. Technician. He's still in the game. He's still the hell bent is in Connecticut, which is a really good gym. There's a lot of camaraderie. Mm -hmm. It's a power lifting gym. They like gear lifting. They have raw lifters. But like, he, it's a... Um, uh, Mike Skiba and General run it, and they kind of try to keep that that yeah. that vibe, which is cool. Like I, I don't love gear lifting, but I tell everybody gear lifting is by far harder than raw lifting. I don't care what anybody says. I did both <coughs> on a pretty decent level, and and they're they're keeping it alive. And the pe those people, they're they're fun. It's you get around more of those characters again, but it's it's so such a small group. But it was that was that was that was golden. That was the other gold, thing, kind of golden time. I think about with, back to what you're saying. What Dave was saying is the when you put the gear on because we. I came you up need as the gear came around. <laughs> yeah. So to put weight on Dave your when body. Dave got stuck in his squat suit. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. I love that. See, story. people so, get cut out of their suits. When you when you put weight on your body that you can't lift. Right. But when you put the gear on, you're able to, you know, it, like there's a screw loose. Yeah. There's something I mean, wrong with you. Like, well, all yeah. those people have a little something wrong with them. Even to put 500 pounds over your chest and bench it. Like well, that's like, fucking heavy. Like pushing, if that falls on you, it'll it could kill you. Pushing your Prius it, to the limit versus pushing like a Formula yeah, One race car. Right. The danger is amplified quite a bit. Yeah. And so. so the mentality to get under under some of the weights that we got under in training and it meets, it's we didn't even think about it. You're like, what's no. on the bar? You couldn't do the math because there was a hundred, there was a one ten, there was a forty five. That might have been a forty four, but Stupid that one was kilos. chipped. So it was yeah. And you just did it add more weight i can't zero get that regard <laughs> yeah that's right in yeah. the forefront of your mind it, add weight i yeah. can't touch for my what's shirt, gonna put happen more weight on. and 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 that's that, gonna take a different I mean, mentality you, you guys will understand this probably more than anybody else because you know me better than a lot of other than most other people i am introverted as all hell what? right so if it was <laughs> yeah exactly so if it wasn't for that social dynamic or actually forcing that social dynamic on yeah. me I, I i looking back i needed that because I'm still, I mean, Jim's more introverted than I am now, but you know, it's pretty freaking close. Yeah. Yeah. No, actually, no, because you're coaching the people, you yeah. know. And yeah. um, but, but that for yeah, you see what was, I'm saying. So if if I didn't have that, it was forced socialization. Yeah. Yeah, it was if I didn't like have that, I would just go into the gym, you know, and just train, and and there would be nobody in my life. Yeah. And there really isn't now. Yeah. Like I said, but, you guys get it, but other people. Just I was won't. I was telling someone this, and we probably all have a certain version. I would assume we all have a certain version of this. Uh, little in, weird uncle little little <laughs> introspection and all that but the only place talking i talking about the really <laughs> feel comfortable is in a gym oh, that it doesn't me. matter what gym but like i'm very comfortable in a place like this i mean look where i work yeah <laughs> or my gym at, at where i coach mm -hmm. or whatever like i it's the only place thing I've ever been like good you at. You feel like you belong. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and outside yeah. it's you know, and now I'm getting a little deep here, and I may no, have to take my right pills. Though. But there's a <laughs> <laughs> you have the absinthe, right? Jim? No, it's, it's funny. <laughs> it, it, it's funny what he's saying though, because there was a time period where I needed um, what do you want to say? Shrink, you know. Uh, it was Larry what, Iron, Iron Smith, this right? So I needed therapy, and where I met the guy was in my gym and it was when the gym was separate from the office and he's trying to explain exactly what you're saying to me like you yeah. know look you build these walls around you I'm like what the fuck are you talking about he's like yeah 
You get a little like bit older, like, like, holy like, shit, there's a wall. <laughs> you know, and it's like, okay, I get what you're saying, but you got to understand that it's still me, you know, so we're not, how's this going to work, you know, and kind of figuring that all out. But it's 100% true, you know, so there's a few places, like I go to Jim's house, I feel comfortable there. I go to, when I used to go to Vincent's house, it took a little while until we got to know each other, super comfortable in certain, you know, certain places around certain people. But then you get outside of here and, yeah. The guard goes back. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like I, going to Jim's, yeah. it's the only house, one of the only house I feel comfortable staying in. Yeah. Like, and his wife and Jim whatever, are so and, like. Yeah. Here's coffee. Just Usually go. I'm hiding in someone's bedroom until I hear people move around. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm at Casa de, de Muerte. I'm yeah. Like, this this, this morning he came out and he lifted up the blanket to see if I was wearing shorts. <laughs> I was. Turtle. Was he turtle? Yeah. Head. Yeah. Got to go back I'm, to the turtle, right? I'm 45. Was he dead? I'm 45. Yeah. It's barely well, alive. One here. How old are you, Dave? You tell me first. I'm, well, I'm going to be 52 in July. We're the same. All right. So I'm, yeah, I'm older. I'm 52. Oh, okay. 